I think we should toast. A toast. A mighty toast. Uh, to the tripod. Yes. To the tripod. Mm. I have knockoff LaCroix and she has an energy drink at 8.30 p.m. non-binary pals my name is Allison and I'm Tori and this is library lists so today we are doing the end of the year book tag not sure when you're supposed to film this yeah we've seen a couple people do it recently so we're doing it too cuz why not were we supposed to do this months ago mm. Who knows? but we're doing it out so it's fine. So the tag has six questions, so it's pretty short, and we are going to jump right in. Question one. Are there any books you've started this year that you need to finish? So there are actually a couple that I have to finish by the end of the year. Some of them I probably won't get to. Usually I'm not a person that starts a book and then stops and puts it down with the intention of coming back. There have been some extraneous circumstances. Like this one, <laughs> The Fifth Season by M.K. Jemison. I started listening to it a few months ago and I realized I couldn't understand anything that was going on in audiobook form because I needed to read it physically. So now we own all three, but I have to go back to it and I think I want to pick up where I left off. I think I tracked enough. And then my second one is Undead Girl Gang by Lily Anderson. I also started this a couple months ago, but the loan got returned. It was through our library app and I was reading it on my phone and the loan got returned before I finished it. So I have it back and I'm back to working on it. But I also want to finish that up by the end of the year. So I'm actually notorious for doing this. <laughs> I am really bad about starting books and then I'll put them down even though I'm enjoying them and I'll go pick something else up or I'll get distracted by some other form of media. Animal Crossing mostly. <laughs> and I have four that I'm in the middle of. Technically five but I think I'm gonna DNF one of them so I'm not gonna talk about that one. Uh, the first one and I think the one I've been technically reading the longest is an absolutely <laughs> Still, I am still where I was, which is page 120. My Animal Crossing bookmark is still in here. Shame. Tori's read both Shame. of them. Shame. So, I'm gonna finish this before the end of the year or I'm going to die. I also started, but did not get very far into these two. So I have the third Adventure Zone graphic novel, which is Pedals to the Metal. I got like 10 pages into this and I don't know why because I normally read these in one sitting. I don't know. I love these and I know I'll love this, so. It's my favorite one so far. I know it's going to be mine. I just haven't read it yet. So I gotta do that. And then I also have this one, which is called Proof. This is a nonfiction read that talks about the biochemistry behind making booze. Which is really cool because it's like two of my favorite things. Biochemistry, which is what I'm studying to get a fucking doctorate in, and alcohol. And I have been reading this very slowly, so I'm only on page 37. <laughs> so, I need to do this. I also want this bookmark back, so I gotta finish this book. <laughs> so you can have the bookmark? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. This is my bribe. This is how I finish books. Question two. Do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? So this is the question that kind of clues me into the fact that we probably should have done this tag sooner. Yeah. Because it's not really going to be fall for much longer. Yeah. But that's fine. It's okay. Also, like, the fuck is an autumnal book? Am I just stupid? Who knows? I'm going with spooky. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so my choice for this is Blood and Salt by Kim Leggett. It feels like a fallish, wintry, spooky book. Yeah. That's another issue that I have with this question. I don't know about you, but I have 
have an issue with this question because I like to go into my books not knowing too terribly much regardless of the genre. I always find that I enjoy books more when I don't know what they're about. Yeah. And like, I don't want to spoil myself because a lot of synopses for books give too much info and like, ah! Like, I'll read a synopsis in the bookstore, like when I buy it, and then I'll completely forget about it by the time I actually get to reading it. So it's an ideal experience for me. <laughs> <laughs> I also went with kind of like a mystery, thriller, spooky sort of book. That feels right for a terminal. I don't know. Uh, but that's The June Boys by Court Stevens, which we got actually used like right after it came out. Miraculously. So I don't know too much about this other than some boys are going missing. <laughs> This is all I got. Did I make a mistake because they're called June Boys and like maybe this isn't a fall read? I don't fucking know. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, I think we both have the same answer for. And that is, is there a new release that you are still waiting for? So if we take this question slightly differently in that a new release I currently do not own, I do have an answer. I ordered Scrape Gracers. <laughs> And it should be coming soon, like in the next few days. Yes. And I'm very excited for that one. So if we're talking about that, Scrape Gracers. Yeah. It's technically already come out, but it hasn't been out for super long. But also these Violent Delights by Chloe Gong just came out. And I've been going back and forth whether or not I want to buy it or not. I mean, we want to buy it. Yeah. Don't get us wrong. Just before the, the end, end of the year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to buy it, just, I don't know, right now, if that is the best time. Because if I buy it, I want to read it, and I don't know if I'm going to get to it yet. Question four. What are three books you want to read before the end of the year? So, my first one is Seafire by Natalie Parker. I have been trying to read this book for so long. I feel like it hasn't even been out that long, but I, f I feel like I've owned it forever. I've checked this audiobook out from Libby, like, four times. <laughs> And I just never listen to it. If I don't finish this by the end of the year, I'm getting rid of it. Yeet! Because I've been trying to read it for so long. <laughs> the next one is Our Dark Duet by V.E. Schwab. Uh, I'm currently reading this Savage Song and really liking it. Mm -hmm. I'm on page like 83, so I'm not super far. But I love it so much, and I love mm -hmm. V.E. Schwab, and I love everything she writes. I've been looking forward to you reading these for so long. I'm so happy. <laughs> I already love this one, so I'm gonna want to read this one immediately after. And then, finally, I have The White Darkness by David Graham. So I've read two of his books this year. I read uh, Killers of the Flower Moon and Lost City of Z, and really enjoyed both of those. I've been meaning to get to this one. And uh, it's about the Antarctic. I also have to read a lot more nonfiction. So I'm well on my way to completing my actual overall goal, which is 120 books. I've got like four or five books left for that. That'll hit easy. I had a goal of reading 20 nonfiction, which is why my goal is 120, not 100. And I've read 13 nonfiction or 14, 14. So um, I have to read six nonfiction by the end of the year. You're gonna be reading a lot of nonfiction. Just one short. I've given up on my reading challenge. We're going on a tangent here since <laughs> you just mentioned it. I've given up on my reading challenge because at this point I still need to read like 30 bucks. It's not happening. I've been too busy. It's not happening, so I'm just gonna read whatever the fuck I want in the meantime. <laughs> uh, so these are just some books that I've really been anticipating reading that I'm gonna try to my best to get to before the end of the year. So the first one, which I am already setting myself up for failure because these boy chunky, and that is, I think it's House of Earth and Blood. It's the new Sarah J Mass book. This thing is hefty. <laughs> It's so thick. It's so long. It's the start of a new series. I don't know anything other than this is Sarah's attempt at writing adult. We bought this when it came out. 
Yeah, we did. Neither of us have touched it. So. Like the week it came out. I'm gonna try my best to read this or at least start it before the end of the year. Another one that we bought, we got it earlier this year and I read the first one and really liked it. But this one is My Plain Jane. I read My Lady Jane, which I loved. I read that one a couple years ago, but this one is... It's like the next in the series, but like it's not really connected to the first book, if that makes any sense. But this one follows Jane Eyre, whereas the first one follows Lady Jane Grey. I'm excited to read this. These always make me laugh. And then another new release that I want to get to before the end of the year, but this one is actually already read and we special ordered this copy from fucking across the ocean <laughs> and it's not even the size book we want. No, but it's fine. <laughs> Uh, that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This is the UK edition and it's so much prettier than the US edition. Fight me on that one. So pretty. Don't know anything about this. Know a few things, but not much. Don't want to know anything though. This one has told me a little bit from what she's read, but not things yes. that'll spoil me. It's very, very good. I know that this got mixed reviews when it first came out. And I know a lot of people said it didn't really follow whatever it was pitched as from what I've heard, but I don't know how true that is now. I, a lot of people were saying it wasn't a romance. And disclaimer, I don't read a lot of romance. So maybe I just don't know what romance is. But it read like a romance to me. I don't know, man. I want to read this. This is, he's short and thick. So I want to read him before the end of the year. Question five. Is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year? I know this will not dethrone my two favorite of the year, but I think it could make it into my favorites overall, into the favorites club. It will not dethrone my top two, I guarantee. But that is All the Crooked Saints by Maggie Stiefvater. I just read Scorpio Races by Maggie Stiefvater and mm -hmm. absolutely adored it. The vibes were impeccable. <laughs> yeah, so I have read All the Crooked Saints. It is my favorite Maggie Stiefvater book by far. And I actually read the Scorpio Races right after Tori did. Because I made her. <laughs> I broke my ankle, so Tori's been bringing me everything. And I told her to bring me something to read, so she brought me the book she just finished. Because it was so good. It was very good. I will agree with you on that. It was so good. It is exactly <laughs> the aesthetic that I like in books. Lots of death. Almost no romance, but like, pining. Wonderful. <laughs> there are horses. Horse girl. <laughs> I'm not a horse girl. <laughs> Oh, um, it's not my fault. I grew up in Horse City. <laughs> the vibes in that book and kind of Maggie's writing and her aesthetic in that book really reminded me of All the Crooked Saints. So now I'm making her read it. I've finally been convinced. Yes. It's also like a Western type yes. deal. And I love anything set in the West. Yes. So. <laughs> um, mine actually has a really good chance of being one of my favorites of the year. Yes. I haven't thought too terribly much about what my actual favorite book I've read this year is, so that's that will fine. be revealed at the end of the year. Yeah, that's <laughs> a problem for later, Allison, to deal with. <laughs> but that is The City We Became by N.K. Jemison because I've been talking about reading this book for what feels like seven months. <laughs> but I'm really excited to read this and I feel like I've screamed about it a lot, so I'm not gonna talk about it. But this has everything that I want in it and I don't know why I still haven't read it. Question six, which is the last question of this tag, is have you already started making your reading plans for 2021? So not specifically, but we have a TBR bookcase. <laughs> Out of frame, yeah, a whole ass bookshelf just for unread books. It's fine, don't talk about it. And it doesn't even have all of them. There's a whole shelf this size on the bottom that has all our fantasy unread books. We're not gonna talk about it. It's fine. God, that's horrifying. Anyway, that's the plan. Fucking deal with that yeah. is the plan. <laughs> yeah. So. And I know what books I want to get to next. Yeah. Besides the ones I talked about in this video. But I'm not going to get to them before the end of the year. So kind of making plans for next year. I just, I know what I want to read. 
It's just a matter of when I'm going to get to it. We're not going to buy as many books next year. Is the hope. It's not going to happen, but we can be optimistic. We didn't keep track this year, so we won't know. <laughs> so it's fine. <laughs> We can't disappoint ourselves because right. we don't know what the mark is. <laughs> I really want to get through some of my non-fictions. I have quite a few. I have quite a few and I have uh, Fabric of the Universe by Brian Greene, which I've had since I was in like third or fourth grade. My Girl Scout leader's husband gave it to me and I was very excited. And I've been very excited about it since I got it Durr. 15 years ago. <laughs> oh dear. It's fine. Have I had this book for 15 years? Have it. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. yeah. Pretty short video. Kind of sums up everything. We will see you again soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye.